All right, so today's video is gonna be on systemic fatigue and local fatigue and why this is important for hypertrophy training. I don't think it's something that's talked about quite enough, uh, which is generally the case with most of these videos that I make. So I wanna bring a little bit of light to this topic and show you guys how important it is to actually understand and implement these strategies into your own training. So basically understanding the difference between systemic and local fatigue is key to hypertrophy training. The reason why understanding the stuff is important is because one of the biggest variables when it comes to building muscle is getting in high quality volume. And if you don't understand how to manage your fatigue and what type of fatigue you should be looking for and what type you should be avoiding, you're not gonna be getting the right quality of volume. So I'm not saying this to fear monger anybody, but this is just something that can enhance your results a little bit. It can give you a better understanding of how uh, volume works and how volume quality actually is uh, going on in your training. So basically what I want to get into is uh, local fatigue is going to be the one that I want to start with. So that's what you should primarily be chasing when you're training for hypertrophy. And I know it's kind of self-explanatory, but for those of you that don't quite understand what it is, local fatigue is going to be a fatigue in a certain spot on your muscles. So obviously that can be like direct fatigue on my quads after a set of leg extensions. That can be direct fatigue on my biceps after a set of curls, my lats on some pull-ups, etc. So local fatigue is generally what you're going to be chasing when it comes to hypertrophy training. And obviously there's certain guidelines that training needs to fall within, like proximity to failure, uh, the correct rep range, the amount of volume, all this kind of stuff. But Chasing lo local fatigue is generally going to be what you want to bias uh, your training towards in hypertrophy. You want to tire out and smoke that muscle that you're trying to build. You want to train it hard, get it bigger. That's obviously what we're trying to do here. So um, with systemic fatigue, that's going to be, in the most general terms that I can say, that's going to be the full body fatigue. So that's uh, it can be short term or it can be long term. For example, short term, let's say you do... Um, a set of 20 on barbell squats. Your whole body is going to be tired. Uh, you're going to be out of breath. Your heart's going to be racing probably at its max capacity. Um, your entire body, since it's a full body movement, is going to be kind of shaking and tired. You're going to be sweating. Like, this isn't something that you can just do. You can't just do like a 3 by 20 on squats uh, to failure or <laughs> very close, even not close to failure. Those are still very difficult as long as you're challenging yourself. Um, you can't go from that into leg extensions and expect those leg extensions to be the highest quality volume for a couple different reasons. Those leg extensions after doing the 3x20 on squats, it's going to be much more difficult to get high quality volume out of that. It's going to be tougher to uh, get to muscular failure because you're going to have other sources of fatigue already within your system. So you're going to be out of breath, your heart's going to be racing, and a lot of it's going to be mental too. When you're exhausted uh, physically, you get exhausted mentally, and it's going to be tough to apply the right effort that you need to to those leg extensions to see the growth that you're looking for. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's something to take into consideration. It's definitely something to be mindful of uh, with your programming and with your training. So now that we have an understanding of what local and what systemic fatigue is, I do want to dive into a little bit of how they uh, compare to each other and the relationship that the two have with each other. So the two aren't mutually exclusive and you can never separate the two entirely. You just have to understand that in order to bias one, you have to take from the other. So if you are trying to bias local fatigue a little bit more, you're not going to be able to do that without eliminating some of the uh, systemic fatigue. Like if you want to bias your quads as much as you possibly can, I'd say doing a hack squat would be a little bit better than doing a barbell squat. And even though they're both difficult movements, you can't tell me that doing a hack squat uh, to failure or to two reps in reserve is more fatiguing in a systemic sense than a barbell squat to two reps in reserve. And you can see that even though the differences might be relatively minor, the barbell squat is going to be crazy fatiguing systemically, obviously, and the hack squat still is going to be pretty systemically fatiguing, but it's almost like an inverse relationship between the systemic and the local fatigue between the two movements. So when you bias one, you take from the other. If for some reason, and obviously this isn't the right thing to do for bodybuilding, and I'll get to that in a minute, but if you're just chasing systemic fatigue, so if you're doing like uh, an exclusive an explosive movement, say a jump squat or something. That movement is going to bias the systemic fatigue and that's what you're chasing. And in turn, 
uh, the local fatigue is going to go down. So your quads on that movement are not going to be as locally fatigued uh, as your full body will be systemically fatigued. So obviously the systemic fatigue is why you're going to fail. You're not going to fail because your quads are uh, basically maxed out on effort and they're going to grow a ton. That's why we don't do jump squats and think we're going to grow our legs from it a whole ton, or at least not optimally. So it's definitely a give and take relationship with the two. So what I do want to get into to build off that point is that systemic fatigue may be limiting your quality of volume and your overall effort level and effort level. It's a little bit more mental. This is where non barbell compound lifts come into play. And this is something I've been preaching uh, for the entire five months I've had my channel. So not that long, but uh, it's something I've preached for the entire time that I've had my channel is what I'm trying to say. For hypertrophy, the use of compound lifts is to maximize tension uh, on the target muscle. Machines can do that just as well, but with much less uh, systemic fatigue. My volume after a barbell compound lift is, in general, is lower quality than my volume after a machine compound lift. So that's part of the reason why I'm so big on non-barbell compound lifts, whether it's with a cable like a lat pull down or whether it's a machine uh, like this lever gym right here. Using a lift, especially if it's at the start of your session, it's generally going to be better to use a machine or something that's at least a little bit less systemically fatiguing, whether that's a machine like I just said, or whether it's intentionally putting yourself at a mechanical disadvantage. The goal is to try and get your muscle to fail before your system does. And that's obviously pretty big for proximity to failure, but it's more importantly, it's important for making sure you get high quality volume in because when you're trying to do a full training session with a multiple sets, obviously bodybuilding is going to be more high volume than pretty much anything else. You have to make sure that you're able to get through the whole session and apply actual good effort to the rest of that session. The reason why I don't necessarily like power building that much is because you put so much effort at the start of every session, especially when you're on like these push pull leg type programs or literally every single day starts off with a super heavy barbell compound lift. And the workouts are so top heavy that you can do all the volume you want after, but it's very difficult to actually apply uh, the effort that you need to to the bodybuilding type work to get the gains that you're looking for. And that's why power building is really just power lifting. It's not actually a perfect mix of power lifting and bodybuilding, but I'm not going to get too much into that today. I have like 15 videos going over that. This leads me into my next point and it's not power building. Don't worry. So pre fatigue, pre exhaust, whatever you want to call it, this is going to be key for hypertrophy. Uh, it's just a good way to get through your workout. If you want to do a compound lift and have it uh, bias the muscle that you're looking to train, obviously that's a great way to do it. But at the same time, if you're somebody that kind of maybe struggles with work capacity a little bit, it's not the worst idea to start off with movements that are purely local fatigue, like isolation lifts or machines or cables, and then do your free weight compound lifts at the end, or whether it's a machine combat or whatever, it doesn't matter. But that way, you kind of kill two birds with one uh, with one stone, basically. You get to uh, target the primary muscle that you're looking for in that hypertrophy uh, compound lift. And at the same time, you don't have to start the workout off with the most systemically fatiguing lift that you have that session directly affecting the rest of your volume. So you kill two birds with one stone with that. It's definitely pretty important definitely try uh, pre-exhaustion, pre-fatiguing. I know people have asked me in the past whether the uh, intensity and the overall quality of the tonnage and the weight you use on the bar actually matters. I'm not too big of a believer in that. I don't. I think overall effort level is going to be much more important and proximity to failure. I think those two are going to be key as long as all your other training variables are in check. I'm not too big of a believer in the intensity that you have relative to uh, if you're in a fresh state, if that makes sense. So uh, next point is that bodybuilding always gets tied in with performance-based strength sports, and it shifts the focus of our training away from quality and into a performance-based mindset. The more advanced we get, the less total lifts you can do, uh, the less total lifts 
you can continue to perform your best within each session. Uh, so we end up biasing one lift in our program and half-assing the rest. So when you first start off, obviously you start to overload and you make progress on most of the lifts in your program. As you get more advanced, the lifts that have a lower load, so weight that you're using for that lift, those are going to plateau first because with the five pound increments or whatever, that's just how it works. If you're on a super heavy lift, that's going to continue to progress because when you add five pounds to a 500 deadlift, that's a tiny little percentage. But when you add five pounds to a 50 pound curl, that's obviously a much bigger percentage. So relatively speaking, the heavier lifts are going to be biased more. Those are typically the ones you do at the start of the workout. If you have a performance-based mindset, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not the right way to view your bodybuilding training. Because if performance is your ultimate goal and you stop performing uh, optimally or whatever, and you stop like making linear progress slowly over time more and more on those lifts that have a lower overall load, what happens is we start to just bias the lifts we can only perform on. So as you go on in one year, six months, a year, two years into lifting, there's only a couple lifts that you can still progress on rather quickly, like a squat bench deadlift. And what happens is if you're just chasing performance, you bias your mental and, and physical effort on those lifts so much that you just stop caring about the rest of your program. And when an even distribution of effort and mental focus throughout your entire program to create quality volume accumulation, when you can't do that, and when you bias just a couple lifts, you're not training properly for hypertrophy. And no matter what your exercise selection is or whatever other variables you have, when your effort is dispersed improperly, you're training more like a power lifter would. And if you're training for hypertrophy, obviously that's not, not the right way to do it. So uh, I've talked about that a lot, so I'm not going to go too much into that. But I do think lifters try to convince themselves that hypertrophy focused movements are inferior because they'll never they're ne they'll never be able to train them as hard as they should when going all in on the big three. So this is where I think the term that accessory lift uh, came from is because people are like, all right, well, I can't continue to progress on every lift, so I'm just going to focus on one. The rest is just accessory work, and I'm not just going to like say, oh, power lifters say that or power builders say that. Like that's what I did. That's what I was taught, and I totally own it. Like that's how I used to train. And I stopped getting results, and that's why I talk so much about it and try and prevent you guys from going down that path. Because I added 100 pounds to my bench and put on literally nothing on the size of my arms. So that's why. Uh, to finish this video off, local fatigue allows you to accumulate more volume. This is key if you respond better to high volume, which is typically better for hypertrophy anyways. So volume is very important. Some people can only respond, or not can only respond, they respond better to higher volume training. If you are systemically fatigued, both short term and long term, it's gonna be very difficult for you to accumulate high quality volume because you're just getting in the volume of your front loaded, biased, heavy compound lifts. So I guess just to leave this video off, understanding the difference between local and systemic fatigue is gonna be crucial, it's very important, just be mindful of it within your training and you can adjust your program accordingly. Uh, and I guess that's pretty much all I have for today. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you.